Today we're going to talk about maps and how to build tiles or tile sets in order to create a nice background for your sprites as well as tiles that you can collide with. All right, so we're going to make sure we're logged in. We're going to click to start. And then let's load up lesson seven. And then hit escape. Let's right away, let's change it to lesson eight. Um, and let's call this maps and tiles. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit escape again and save Oops. as lesson eight. All right. So we're not really going to mess around too much with the code. There's only one line of code that we're going to write in this lesson. Mostly we're going to be in the sprite editor. So I have some random sprite in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. If you still have the little robot guy from the original kind of starter code, you can go ahead and delete that too. And all you have to do is select the square that you want to delete and just delete it. You can also make your selecting area bigger if you wanted to do more at once. So when you're thinking about what background sprites to make, by the way, we already made foreground sprites in another lesson. So foreground, you don't want to put your, your tiles in here. You want to leave your tiles in the background. And that has to do with how Tick80 handles um, drawing the sprites at different times. So we're in the background tab, and in order to kind of get an idea of what tiles you might want to make, you could do some Googling. I just did Googled 8x8 tile set, and there are a lot of examples. These are really complicated. You don't have to make yours this fancy. You can think about like what you want your walls or platforms to look like, what you want background items to look like, and then the filling in in between what that you want what you want that to look like. So a couple of simpler examples. Here's one that could make a desert. Pay attention to kind of what different kinds of edges you might want to have and what kinds of middles you might want to have. Here's another example of more like a, a medieval castle wall kind of look. On this one you can see there's a couple more decorative items. So a lot of times you use tiles to do mainly collisions, but in Tick 80, tiles make up both collision type items and um, background type items. And collision type items, I just mean platforms and walls, things that you walk on or bump into. This is another example that's a little more complicated, and it's nice to see the different kinds of background items you might want to make. Um, when you're doing backgrounds, you don't have to limit yourself to just eight by eight. You can make your kind of decorative items as big as you want. I'm going to go ahead and work on some, and then I'll come back and show you an example of what I did. All right, so here's what I came up with. I'm sure you artists out there are going to come up with much better things than this, but just as an idea, I have some collidable objects up on the top here and I suggest if you want your code to look like mine that you keep your, your collidable tiles at the top and your background tiles at the bottom. So anything that you want to be able to walk in front of you put at the bottom. Anything you want to bump into you put at the top. Notice that I have background colors in each of these so I've thought about what my kind of like sky background is going to look like and what my ground background is going to look like and I matched that up here. You'll see that in a minute when I talk about the map. And notice that I've made some of these bigger than we've worked with in the past. You can use the slider to work with bigger areas. Make sure you don't put anything in this first slot, number zero. The reason for that is that whatever is in this slot will be the default background for your the entire background. Um, and we don't want to let that just automatically be our default background because we're keeping the upper part of this as collidable and you don't want your entire background to be collidable. 
So down here in the lower part, I just gave myself a little sky block that I used to put in the map. And it's really quick and easy to do. So somewhere in this bottom part, put a block that you want to be the default background. Before I move on to talking about the map, I just wanted to show you something that I discovered. I've been bothered by the lack of a brown color. And I found this advanced mode here. And what I discovered is that if you choose a color and then choose this little slider bar down here, this is actually an RBG color slider. And I was able to kind of play around with it. So I was able to make a brown. So if you wanted to do that, um, you can um, change the colors in this by using that little tool there. And then I go ahead and change back to non-advanced mode um, in order to do my actual tiles. Now, once you have your tile set made, um, it's time to look at the map. The map editor is this four square thing here. There are two ways to look at the map. The grid here is more of a close up. And then there's this eyeball that shows you the world map. Each of these is called a cell, and it's basically the view that you would have for your game, the entire screen. And then if I hit tab, I can get back into the map editor. And this is this whole thing is one screen. So you can see as I'm hovering, it has two numbers. It's a um, X and a Y coordinate. As I move up, you can see the second number getting smaller. And then there's, there's one more row hidden up here. And as I move left, it's getting smaller. So right up here in the corner is my very upper left, and then it goes down here. I can look at different um, areas of the map by going into the world map and dragging this around. So I'm just clicking and dragging. Notice that the edges are connected to each other. Um, I'm just going to start in the upper left corner of my first world map. To add um, the background that I talked about earlier, I'm going to click this little down arrow here. I'm going to choose my tile that I want to be the background for my whole thing. And I'm going to choose the bucket. And then once I click somewhere, it just fills everything in. And we can check to see whether it filled in the whole map by clicking the eyeball. And indeed, it filled in the entire map. So now that um, background is a non-collidable tile, and I can fill in the rest of the tiles um, with collidable or non-collidable, however I want my map to look. Um, I keep forgetting when I get into this map, it's tab to get out. So um, just kind of make a mental note that it's not escape, it's tab to get out of that map. Okay, so then I'm going to go into draw and then I'm going to click another tile. Maybe I want some grass. Maybe I want a boulder, maybe like here. And so I can just continue to build my map however I might want it to be. Um, so I'll go ahead and pause and build some things up here and then I'll come back. All right, so here's what I came up with. Pretty simple. Um, you can kind of see how I use the tiles, the middle tiles you can use multiple times to build stuff up. I have this green tile that I use down here. Um, I used a couple of these kind of rock tiles to make the rock look a little bit different. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our um, console and run. So notice that the background does not show up yet. That is because we need to write one single line of code to make our background, our map, show up. So in my tick function, I'm going to do map. And then map has four inputs that it needs. It needs the upper left corner. So if I go back into this map editor, remember this upper left hand corner was zero, zero. That's where I want to start. So those are my first two numbers. And then I want the width and the height 
And because this is zero, it's going to be one more than what we see down here. All right, so zero, zero is the x, y starting coordinate. And then the width was 30 and the height was 17. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. So notice that I'm not actually colliding with anything right now. I still have my little glitch with my jump there. Um, and that's okay because we haven't coded that in. In the next video, we're going to basically rework the whole blobby move function to have all the jump and the moves work with the tiles. So first let's save and back up our file. So I'm going to go ahead and save lesson eight. And next I'm going to download the file using get. And remember to download the file, you do need to use the dot tick extension. And then it should save to your downloads folder. All right, so for now, just get all your background set up. And in the next video, I'll tell you how to do the rest.